Let me extend a warm welcome to each one of you. Uh, uh, on behalf of my chairman, I would like to uh, uh, note that we have we have uh, pioneered some uh, good work uh, in the realm of international relations uh, uh, for the past several years uh, in the city of Mumbai. Observer Research Foundation has uh, primarily worked and focused on issues pertaining to urban renewal, sustainable development, uh, public health, education, and international relations. Uh, in, in, this, uh, in, in our efforts uh, in, in, in the realm of international relations, our, our uh, activities have been mostly to enable the establishment of uh, cordial and warm, friendly relations between India and its uh, immediate neighborhood. So, in, in this regard, our activities are primarily focused on uh, fostering good relations between India, Pakistan, and India and China. We have uh, instituted several initiatives such as the uh, Mumbai-Karachi Friendship Forum, which aims to uh, encourage people-to-people -people contact to overcome the cultural barriers that currently exist in our uh, relationship. Uh, similarly, uh, in, in the realm of uh, India-China bilateral relations, uh, with cooperation from University of Mumbai, Reliance Foundation, uh, the Fudan University, we have uh, established uh, GC Angling Center for India and China Studies. Uh, the center aims to encourage activities, area studies, research uh, on China. And uh, as part of our international relations, we have also regularly hosted uh, public lectures, roundtable discussions, international conferences uh, to enable knowledge sharing and foster public discussion. So carrying forward this tradition, uh, we are extremely pleased to have uh, in our presence uh, Professor David Shambaugh from the George Washington University, a sinologist for more than three decades. We are indeed privileged to have you, sir. And uh, uh, he's going to talk on a subject that continues to intrigue uh, all of us, uh, the rise of China as an economic and military powerhouse uh, has generated a great deal of uh, excitement as well as anxiety in uh, some countries. The influence of globalization has ensured that what happens in China would inherently affect the future of other countries. To further enlighten us on the subject, we have uh, Professor Shambhav. Uh, he's been currently a director of uh, the China Policy Program at the George Washington University. Uh, in his career of three decades, more than three decades, he's been he served in senior positions in different government agencies, think tanks, and universities in the United States and abroad. Uh, he was a non-resident senior fellow in the Foreign Policy Studies Program at the Brookings Institution. And he also served in the board of directors of the US-China National Committee on Bilateral Relations. Uh, he's also been a recipient of several research grants, fellowships, uh, given his pioneering work on China. And uh, we are indeed very honored, sir. And uh, his recent book, uh, he's written 20, he's authored 20 books on China and several countless number of research papers that has tried to demystify the rise and growth of China. Uh, and uh, his recent book was uh, published in 2016, uh, titled China's Future. So without further ado, I, uh, I invite my chairman, Sri Sudhendra Kulkarni ji, to present his introductory remarks. Over to you, sir. Dear friends, and before I begin, I want to recognize the presence, the audience of our dear friend from the Chinese uh, consulate, Mr. Li Yuanling, the Deputy Consul General. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Li Fanghui, Cultural Consul. Mr. Guo Taoji, a very dear friend of ours, and also uh, Mr. Amit Das Gupta, former India's Consul General in Sydney, and now a great friend of ours who is uh, working 
for strengthening India-Australia relationship. It's truly an honor for us to host this talk by Professor David Shambhu. Sanket, uh, my colleague, in his introduction said that he has authored 20 books on China. And Ms. Li Fanghui was telling us a little earlier that uh, he is not only uh, famous all over the world, but he is very famous in China itself. Uh, he is uh, very, very well known in China because of his work on China. He's been, uh, he spent all his adult life, scholarly life, studying China. He's been visiting China every year since 1979, not just visiting, but living and I think he's gained enormous knowledge, China's history, China's society, China's polity, and the outcome of his labor, scholarly labor, is that we have uh, an opportunity to understand China better. More than two centuries ago, it was Napoleon who said that China is a sleeping giant. Let her sleep, for when she wakes, she'll move the world. Napoleon's words are indeed coming true, because China, it's not a question of uh, whether China will rise, when China will rise. The fact is China has risen. And the world is increasingly taking notice of China's rise. The world is undergoing profound change, friends, as uh, has been said by many scholars, the West is in decline and the rest is rising, the rest of the world. And China is indeed leading the rise of the rest of the world. And especially with the advent of uh, the new president of the United States, this transformation has become even more manifest. United States, the one-time global superpower and until recently the sole superpower has gone into protectionism and it is China which has emerged as uh, the flag bearer of globalization. Something that was very forcefully stated by China's president, Mr. Xi Jinping, at uh, the Davos summit last month. Therefore, it is important for us in India to understand China, at, especially at this critical juncture. China is our largest neighbor, most important neighbor, and 20th, 21st century is going to be shaped, in my belief, by the kind of relationship that India and China are going to develop. And for this to happen, we in India must have deep and broad understanding of China. And we must understand China from all perspectives. And which is why at the Observer Research Foundation, we make effort to enlighten ourselves with perspectives from different perspectives on China from different parts of the world. And in Professor Shamba, we have that eminent scholar who today is going to talk to us on the future of China. In fact, China's future is the title of his latest book, which came out last year. And I, I certainly am not aware of, I'm familiar with all the 20 books, but uh, three books 
have particularly interested me the book that first caught my attention was when i was myself political activist with the current ruling party uh, and you know the bjp at that time had lost the election and i got hold of a book by professor shomba titled china's communist party atrophy and adaptation a scholarly book on how the chinese communist party has again and again adapted itself to new situations rejuvenated itself after encountering crises after en encountering what he calls atrophy be it 1989 the tiananmen tiananmen square uh, episode and what interested me especially was the profound description of uh, the chinese communist party school system because those days uh, i was trying to understand how political parties in india you know can uh, can make themselves more relevant more useful uh, by providing good governance and to provide good governance and be able to face very complex challenges before the country the political party political functionaries have to constantly educate themselves not only in the ideology of their respective parties but also on to gain domain knowledge of the various developmental governance challenges and that is what uh, this book china's communist party atrophy and adaptation taught me welcome dr parshuraman the director of the tata institute of social sciences thank you the second book was uh, china goes global a partial power it came it came out a few years ago and this book by professor shambo describes how as part of china's rise china is also becoming a global power economic trade of course technological and military at the same time this rise of china as a global power he qualifies it by saying that it is a partial power it is not it is not a, a comprehensive global power like the united states and therefore it is uh, you know it was very useful and it continues to be useful for us to know why china in spite of becoming uh, a major power is still not assuming the same kind of responsibilities for global governance as some other powers which are far less economically strong but that situation also may change because once the united states become become more and more protectionist become more inward looking the circumstances may force countries like china even india to assume greater responsibilities for global governance the third book which i read recently and i didn't know that we'll have the opportunity of uh, hosting the author himself was china's future china's future after xi jinping has become the party chief and the president has begun to interest all china few china watchers around the world and of course there are different perspectives and he has his own perspective and i would like to even though he is going to touch upon this uh, this subject in his in his talk i would like to read out one paragraph from this book 
Looking to the future, China's role in the world can only be expected to increase regardless of which alternative domestic pathway it follows. The outstanding question is whether China gets along better or worse with the world. Two pathways we have identified, neo-totalitarianism and hard authoritarianism. These can be expected to make China's foreign relations worse, while the other two pathways, soft authoritarianism or semi-democracy, could make them better. By selecting one of the latter two paths, that is soft authoritarianism or semi-democracy, China's leadership will have a greater chance of a win-win outcome, improving its chances of successful reforms at home and more cooperative relations abroad. So, we are very keen to listen to your assessment of China's future. Professor Shambha, thank you very much for accepting our invitation. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I assure you that we're going to have a very educative, enlightening talk. Thank you very much.